Hello everybody. It is, um, what are we, today's Saturday. Oh my gosh, this whole um, week, weekend, everything has gone by way too fast. Uh, so Saturday night, I just um, home actually for a really quick um, time. Hi Megan, I had such a good time today with you. Um, I'm just here home quickly for a few minutes. I had to feed the pups and uh, just drop a few things off. I'm actually heading back out again. I'm going to go bowling with some friends, um, some neighbors, friends of mine. And I just got home from a dinner with a whole bunch of friends, wonderful people. Some of them I haven't seen for a little while. Um, today we had a, uh, with my company, we had a rally and it was a chance for everybody to get together and um, learn. And a lot of people got up and shared stories. And kind of um, one of the main common things about all these people getting up and sharing stories, I mean, these stories were, oh my gosh, some of these stories brought people, brought us to tears listening to them. Um, and it took such courage for some of these people to get up there and share their stories. And I mean, these were stories of absolutely um, huge life changes for people, whether it was massive changes uh, physically, their health, their physical health, their mental health and well-being, um, wonderful financial stories about people going from literally from rags to riches. Um, but the one thing that I actually really wanted to share um, was, well, actually a couple of things. First of all, it was so powerful to have all of these people together in a room that were sharing together and positive and not negative. Um, it's something that really is actually kind of rare in our society right now is that people are so often so quick to, if they have huge physical struggles or mental struggles or financial struggles, um, the main thing that they do is they all get together and they bitch and gripe about it and complain and but why me and how come I'm in this situation and this was not like this at all this was people getting together to tell their story and all these people there that were there to support them and to say wow that's amazing you know how far you've come what you've gone through the challenges that you've overcome and I'm so glad to be here and to be a part of your story and there to support each other. And I think that that community is such an incredible and wonderful thing. And I think so many more people really need um, that support group, that community, that feeling of being included and helped and loved by other people. And the other thing that um, this whole day sort of event um, brought up was, and I actually wrote it down because I wanted to make sure there was actually two little points that I didn't want to forget. So I actually wrote them down. And one was, without struggle, you never grow. And I think this is something that is so true. Like they always say, you kind of have to like go through those tough times to be able to appreciate the good things that you do have in your life. And if, I mean, I think everybody, I don't know anybody that hasn't had some kind of struggle in their lives. When you've gone through those struggles, whether it's, you know, a bad relationship and a breakup and stuff like that, or literally losing everything, losing your business, losing your house, whatever. When you go through those struggles in life or like huge health issues, you know, um, facing cancer, things like that, you you have those struggles, you really appreciate things. You realize there's a lot of things in life that really don't matter. You know, like the old don't cry over spilt milk or if it's not gonna matter a week or a month or a year from now, does it really matter? Like, does it really matter that your kid's not wearing matching socks? No, it doesn't. Do we have to have a fight over it? No, we don't. Um, so that, so without that struggle, you don't grow. So if you're going through a really rough patch, a really hard time, if you're struggling with things, that's part of a growth process. You need that to be able to get to where you need to be. So try not to look at the, the downside of the struggle. Look at where you're going to be on the other side of the struggle. And um, one of the ladies that was there, she had said something about what is stopping you from getting to where you want to be in life and to write it down. So I think for me, my biggest thing in, in 
I mean, I, I, there isn't a lot really that honestly keeps me from trying to do what I want to do. But my biggest thing is the fear of failure because if I do something, I don't want to fail at it. Um, and I guess that's kind of the, the competitive side of me, that red pants in me. If I'm doing something, I want to be able to succeed at it. And it honestly is probably the only thing in life that really stops me from doing things is that fear of failure. And then she said, now flip it. So the thing that you're afraid of, what if that isn't an issue? So instead of going, well, what's holding me back? Well, a fear of failing for something. What if I succeed? And I really liked that idea. So if you're struggling really and know it's a part of your growth, it's a part of a process that you're going through. And if you can try and pinpoint what it is that's causing the struggle with you. So for me, if you're failing in something, what if you succeed? Like, what would that mean? What would your life be like if you can get over that hurdle? If it's literally a fear of heights, what if you weren't afraid of heights? What are the things that you would be able to do and the, the, the things that you could go? Like, I mean, you could climb Mount Everest, you could whatever. I mean, honestly, like sky's the limit. If you realize that one thing that you're afraid of that's holding you back, what if it's not an issue? So I really like that. So that was the one thing. I think I've gone through literally, what, five different things. But um, there was one other one, and so I wrote it down. Oh, and it was that things have to get really bad in our lives before we make changes. And this one drives me insane because it's so 100% true. And, I mean, I look at, I think health is probably the biggest one. And this is, um, I mean, this was true in my life. It's true in, like, I uh, Oh God, I, I, I can think of probably a hundred people if I had to list them off. Why do we wait until we have a major health crisis before we seriously look at our health? And I'm not talking just like, I'm talking every aspect of your health, your physical health, your mental health, your financial health, your, your everything. Your health is not just one thing. Health is a whole, your whole life health. Why do we have to wait till we're in crisis before we do anything about it? I mean, for me, it was um, literally waking up and realizing I had fibromyalgia. I mean, it, it, you know, there was a few points here, there, there, but I mean, literally over six months, my life went from, wow, wonderful, great, doing everything to a crash where, I mean, literally getting out of bed was a struggle most days. And there were days I couldn't even get out of bed there were my kids for years couldn't hug me because I'd be in tears because of the pain I mean my life was absolutely about as low as it could possibly get there were days I did not want to go on um sorry that's hard but then that's when I realized I have to do something about this I mean because like honestly nobody's going to wave a magic wand for you. They're not going to fix things for you. You're not going to win the lottery. It's not going to change your life. You have to, sorry, people get a little bit teary eyed when I talk about it. You have to take care of yourself. You have to, you have to do it. Like you can go to the doctors and say, okay, I have this wrong with me, this, that, and that. And they'll go, okay, yeah, here, we'll give you this pill. And if that doesn't work, come back and we'll give you this pill. And if that doesn't work, we'll give you this and this. And those work, but it's making your stomach ache, so now we'll give you this. And, like, you have to take control of your own life. You have to make the changes. And if you are not sick now, if you're not struggling in your life, if you're not struggling financially, if you're not having mental issues, breakdowns, uh, emotional issues, if you're not having major health issues in your life right now, don't wait till you are to do something about it. Because I have people that say, oh, you know what? I'm doing fine. I'm great. You know, we're healthy. We're good. And so was I until I wasn't. So take the time to actually look at your life and look at all the areas in your life. I have this um, thing Sorry, I just got to say hi to the puppy. Hi. Um, that I went to a couple years ago was um, a speaker. And they talked about having um, like a whole rounded part of your life. And the, the areas of your life was um, fitness, family, faith, fun, finances. Oh, I, um, I don't know. Okay, so, but you get the idea that you have a fully rounded um, in every aspect of your life. So if you are doing, if you're lucky and you're doing okay right now, look at all the different aspects of your life and see if you really are healthy 
in all those aspects. I know a few years ago, um, there was a specific areas that, you know, I go, okay, I'm really not doing well in these finance. I think everybody struggles in finance for most of their lives. So that was one of them that I needed to work on. Family, um, I think probably all of us could use more family time. So I knew I had to work on that. But one that I really had to work on a few years ago was fun. I honestly did not take time to make sure I had fun. So that was one area of making a more rounded life that I had to actually make an, a physical effort of doing. I had to write it into my schedule. Once a week, I was going to do something fun for me. Now I could plan fun stuff with my family, my kids and everything else, but I had to do something that was fun for me. Going out, I don't care what it is. Go out, go swimming, go play darts, go bowling, go square dancing. I find something. I think I started doing some paint nights with my girlfriends and stuff like that and family and friends and stuff, but find something. So let's just to kind of recap over what I was trying to talk about with this live. Um, and this live is part of that 21 day challenge thing I was talking about. Um, so I think it's day five anyways. So is that without struggle, you don't grow. So if you're struggling, it's part of a growth thing so try to figure out what it is that's causing your struggle and then write it down and then look at the flip side of it and see if that what's causing the struggle now wasn't an issue then you wouldn't really have a problem and then see if there's a way that you can address that and the other one is that things really have to get really bad before we make a change in our lives so don't be like me and wait until you have a massive health crisis to try and figure out what's wrong in your life. I mean, I know now what it is. I know I have to exercise. That's something I have to commit to doing all the time. I have to make sure I eat right. I have to really be careful what I'm eating. I have to watch my chemical exposure. So getting rid of toxins, even making sure I'm not having foods that are sprayed. So like the organic stuff and literally not going and spending a whole bunch of time out in like grocery store in that nasty chemical aisle where everything smells and like that'll literally, that'll send me on a loop. Um, avoiding stress. Stress will make my fibromyalgia flare up. And I mean, in, like instantly, um, I can have a massive headache and all my joints can start to hurt and things like that. So like, I mean, I know that now I know how to handle it, but I never even looked at it before because I never even thought about it until it became a crisis. So anyways, I babbled on way too long and hope you're all having a good weekend. Hope you got a chance to have some fun, spend some time with your family and with friends and love you all.